solidarity from the Syrian community, a community that has its own set of trials, but that doesn't stop us, and it will never stop us, from standing in solidarity with the people of Palestine. And let us not forget that the Palestinian people themselves are standing in solidarity with the people of Ferguson, Missouri, showing us very powerfully that the fight for justice can easily cross oceans and knows no boundaries. So today I'd like to talk to you about a campaign that I've developed uh, within the Syrian community and through Rapar uh, that has very close relevance to the Palestinian issue. Now both my husband and I are Syrian. The difference between us is that I have an American passport while he has a Syrian passport. And that's a difference which I've learned over the past three years means that we're subject to different types of treatment in many different respects. And one of these differences played out last January when our joint account was inhibited and almost closed at HSBC over suspicion regarding his nationality. And yes, I mean suspicion over his nationality, not suspicion over money that was transferred in or out, as we've never had money transferred into or out of the country, not suspicion regarding account activity, uh, as we don't have any suspicious or unaccounted for withdrawals or deposits. No, it was actually suspicion over his nationality. And with Syria being a sanctioned country, the bank decided that it didn't want to deal with us anymore. So we soon realized that this was something happening with many other Syrians. Uh, and please do keep in mind that the Syrian community is already vulnerable as it is at present time. And you may have also heard of the recent media activity exposing HSBC's targeting of other vulnerable groups. So for example, in July we heard uh, of their closi closing of accounts of several Muslim charities. For example, the Oma Welfare Trust, which is represented here today. Uh, they've also closed the accounts of several prominent activists, uh, all of them Palestinian activists, under the guise of risk analysis or compliance with national regulations. So HSBC is claiming that there's nothing inherently discriminatory about the way that it's treating its customers, but we know that this pattern of account closures is far from being coincidental. HSBC is very obviously targeting people because of their nationalities or political ideologies, and it's thinking that it can intimidate people and stop services to them because of their background or political stances, so for example, against Israeli aggression. It's a very underhanded and unacceptable way that it's abusing its power over its customers, and it's something that should not be justifiable through a set of rules and regulations or terms and conditions. So with all of us here engaged in the boycott of Israeli products, I'd like to urge you all to join us in boycotting HSBC. Uh, under the umbrella of two organizations, RAPAR, which we have a table uh, back there and I'd urge you all to visit it, as well as uh, an organization called Rethink Rebuild, we've started a campaign against HSBC's dis discriminatory policies and its abuse over its customers. So uh, please join us in this boycott in solidarity with the Palestinian issue, but also in solidarity with other communities that have been unfairly targeted by the state. Um, Please do check out our work uh, at Rapar there. Find out how you can be involved in this campaign and other campaigns, as well as how you can support our work so that we can continue. Thank you.